What's up everyone? It's Brandon, Be The Installer, and I'm here to give you the buying guide for the summer. Right now it's going to be Amazon Prime Day tomorrow, so great deals on TVs, sound bars, TV mounts, accessories. I'm gonna give you all the best deals. The prices will then extend you know, later on this summer, and if you miss actual Prime Day, don't worry, Black Friday or thereabouts, you'll have great pricing opportunities too. So I'm gonna go over all that right now. Make sure to smash the like button if you could, please, and make sure to subscribe and set the notification bell to all so you're notified uh, when I upload a new video. And let's get right into it. I'm gonna share my screen so that you guys can see the deals. And as you see here, it says Black Friday in July. So I'm gonna go over um, some TVs that I think for some of the major companies that are the best deals and kind of my target prices for those. As you can see on this main screen, you have all kinds of different deals. And a lot of these prices won't be updated until tomorrow, which is uh, the first day of Amazon Prime Day. And as I was talking with Stop the FOMO, a lot of the times Amazon will price them a certain uh, level and then Best Buy and Samsung and everyone else will react to those pricing and lower theirs to match them. That, so just be prepared that the pricing may not be exactly the same. But the first one that I wanted to go to real quick was the Samsung frame because I've actually bought a Samsung frame last year and I had bought it on Best Buy's website. It was about $12.99 as this year's 50 inch is. And then like this one, it went down a few hundred dollars. I think mine went all the way down to a thousand. So then I went back to Best Buy and I was able to get the $300 back because it was within my return period. And so that's something that I would think you guys should look to do if you've already purchased a TV. But if not, the Samsung frame this year has more of a matte like finish and the art mode is much faster. So I definitely would recommend getting the 2022 frame over the 2021 below here, just because availability for one, but it is a better TV and the matte finish does look a lot better. It really knocks down the reflection and it's about the same brightness, decent TV, great for art mode. And as you can see here, if you click on the 85 inch, it was just $42.99 a few days ago. So you're actually getting $800 off this 85 inch and so that's a really good deal if you wanted to get the 75 inch it's 900 dollars cheaper of course so the 75 is also a good deal it's only 400 off its normal price but i would recommend the samsung frame to those who may be having to convince the spouse to get a tv and therefore the art mode may help which a lot of other tvs don't have so that's one to look at and i want to uh, make sure you guys knew about that and then of course you can go to amazon amazon prime day that's the whole point here is you have the same Samsung 50 inch, you know, look for the same Mona Lisa, which is the 2022 version. And you can see that the 50 inch TV only uh, is again, 1097. So $2 cheaper here. Buying TVs on Amazon is a bit trickier sometimes because the return is a little bit more difficult to return something that needs to be freight shipped. So think about that. Your Best Buy is a little easier or retailers in general. Make sure you check out something like Value Electronics, our good friend, Robert Zone can hook you up with some of these prices as well. I'm sure he'll match some of these Amazon Prime prices, so check them out, good friend of ours. Another Samsung TV, since we're on Samsung, is the S95B OLED. Now, I really like this TV, and the more I think about it, the more I like the TV, because there are two new QD OLED TVs. One is Sony, the A95K, which isn't out yet, and the other is a Samsung S95B, which is. And right off the bat, the Sony is supposed to cost $4,000, while the Samsung started out at $3,000 and now is $2,600 on Best Buy's website. And again, it could be more aggressive come tomorrow morning or later in the year, especially if you're watching this video later in the summer. This could be something that maybe you can get down at the $2,000 range for a 65 inch. Overall, the new technology, the QD OLED is really nice. Probably only TV that can compare with it is the LG G2, which I'll talk about in a second, but it's extremely bright, extremely vibrant colors, and you have a very good anti-reflective screen, solid speakers for an OLED. So overall, a very highly rated TV. And so if you're looking for a QD OLED, this is the one to get. You can also go to samsung.com if that is better for you, the same price as of now. Again, pricing may change, but at $25.99, I think it's a great opportunity. Again, if you could get this TV for even less than that, $2,000 or less, that would be amazing. And of course, you can find it on Amazon, same price point. And on Amazon here, they have opportunities to get it with sound bars. I checked the pricing for with sound bars. It doesn't give you any sort of discount as of today for buying the sound bar. It's just pairing them together. But buying a Samsung sound bar and TV together gives you a, a more immersive sound stage. So it'd be a good opportunity for you to check out those prices. 
and target a soundbar if that's something you need. And again, I'm gonna talk about soundbars in a minute too. So if you want a really good deal from Samsung, I would have you take a look at the Samsung QN90A as long as it's available. It was a TV from last year, one of the highest rated QLED TVs ever. And right now you can get the 85 inch for $22.99. So I just told you about a 65 inch OLED TV you could get for $26.99. This is an 85 inch for $22.99. It's a thousand dollars off the price that it was for the last six months. And so if you're looking for a large screen, 85 inch, this is an amazing deal. And I think as long as this TV is available, I would recommend to people to get it. There are a couple downsides to this TV that I mentioned in my other videos. One of them is that sometimes these Samsung QLED TVs have what's called a dirty screen effect, where you have a little bit of screen uniformity issues where the TV can pan left or right on a bright screen and you see what seems to be dirt on the screen. If your TV doesn't have that or if you don't notice it, then it's like ignorance is bliss, great TV, don't worry about it. It's not always the case. It can vary from TV to TV. The other one is the blooming. Now this TV is really good at controlling blooming, but sometimes it knocked down the highlights. So it's an extremely bright TV. Again, firmware updates have made it a little better over time but I would recommend this to anybody for $22.99. I was recommending this when it was well over $3,000. So 85 inch, $22.99 is an amazing deal. Look, the 75 inch is only $21.99. So you get $100, gives you another 10 inch on TV screen size. And normally that is never happening. So great opportunity to get the 85 inch. This is a great price. And I think it was way lower than it was around the Super Bowl or Black Friday last year. So awesome deal. So getting into Sony TVs, there's a couple deals I wanted to speak about. One is an OLED and the other is a comparison of LED TVs from last year to this year. So let's start out with the OLED first. So last year there were two OLEDs. There was the A90J and then the A80J. This year there really is just one major OLED because they're coming out with the QD OLED like I said later. But the A80K OLED right here is the new one for 2022. And the 55 inch is rather expensive compared to the A80J of last year, that's $999. So if you're looking for a 55 inch, that's an incredible deal. But if you're looking at 65 inch, this A80K is already down $500 from its retail price and it only came out a month ago. So this is a great opportunity to get a deal on a brand new OLED. I think this is even less expensive than the LG C2, which is a great OLED opportunity as well, but yeah, it's $300 less than the LG C2. And these are very comparable TVs. I can talk about how this LG is a little bit better for gaming. It's just been a little bit more proven to have all the gaming features. So if you're a gamer, I would go with the LG C2 or even C1. But if you're going for movie experience, I really like the Bravia XR processor. So this Sony A80K is a good deal at $19.99. This is typically a price you'd see around Black Friday. Maybe it'd be a little bit lower, but a great price for the summer. So if it goes below $2,000, you got to snag it. If you need that smaller 55 inch, you're not going to find a much better deal than $1,000. It's been like this for a week or so. So that's a great opportunity. And that is last year's A80J. There isn't a whole lot of difference between the A80J and the A80K. Both of them are very good TVs. It's just that the deal on the A80J is the 55 inch, while the 65 inch is actually more expensive than the brand new A80K. So that's a better deal at the 65 inch. And at 77 inch, they kind of go back up. This is still less expensive than the 77 inch of the A80J. So kind of complicated, but those two TVs, very good opportunities. And then in the LED world, I just did a review on this X90K, which is a full array local dimming LED TV. It's a solid TV. It's got a little bit of blooming issues that we didn't really love. But when talking about this X90K of 2022, which for a 65 inch, is $12.99, and then I compare that to last year's X95J, it's the same price. So a lot of people have asked me, should I get last year's X95J or this year's X90K? And I would say because last year's TV was a little bit brighter and also had a few more dimming zones, I would just go with the X95J of last year as long as you can get that. Because they have the same XR processor, it has more dimming zones and it's brighter. It also has better viewing angles and also has the anti-reflective properties that the X90K just doesn't have. 
So in a dark room, you probably wouldn't notice much of a difference between these two, but as soon as you have a bright room or windows, you'll definitely wanna go with the X95J over the X90K. So I didn't get that in my other video, so I'm glad I had an opportunity to talk about that now. And then when it comes to top LG TVs, Really, I would go OLED or I would go a different brand. I'm not a big fan of the LG LED TVs. A lot of them have IPS type panels and I really prefer VA panels, but really I would just stick with LG OLEDs. And I will tell you the LG C1 of last year is a phenomenal buy. So if you can get that 77 inch TV for $23.99 or better, I would absolutely get that TV. It's got a great form factor on a stand. It looks good on the wall amazing picture quality, it's an OLED, and it's one of the best deals you can get. So right here, 77 inch TV for 2,400 bucks, phenomenal deal. You also have the G1 of last year, which is a solid TV, but I actually have heard a lot of great things about the LG G2, even though I haven't reviewed it. But the only problem with the G2 is that there's not a big discount at this point. So we'll have to see what happens because it's so new and it's limited supply and high demand. You're not going to get a great deal on the G2. So then it comes down to would you buy the LG G1 of last year or the C2 of this year? And I think that they're very similar on brightness levels and quality. So really it comes down to whether or not you wanna put it on the wall flush, which would be the Gallery Series OLED. It has that flush look to the wall. It does not come with the stand, so you'd have to buy that separately. But if you're gonna put it on the stand, then I probably would just go with the LG C2 because that's one of my favorite TVs that I've reviewed so far this year. LG continues to improve upon their C Series OLED. So Definitely a good TV. I don't know what kind of deals are in store for that. So again, it's $300 more than the Sony A80K. I like both TVs and I think that either one of them would be a great deal. But as you can tell, this LG C1 from last year, hugely popular. Anybody that gets that TV is really happy. So this is the best deal. As long as it's available, you can get it at Costco, Best Buy, Amazon, and so on. Uh, as far as Hisense and TCL goes, there's not a lot of new TVs out from these companies yet. Uh, I did take a look at some of these super large TVs. Now we have three different TVs you could buy and the prices are really expensive, so I'm just letting you guys know. As you can see, the Samsung 98 inch QN90A is down to $1299 from $1499, so yay $2,000 off, but it's still $13,000. The TCL 98 inch, now that's $8,500, and that's actually up 500 bucks, so maybe it'll be discounted on Amazon Prime Day and so forth, but the TCL is by far the most affordable of the 98 inch or 97 or even 100 inch TVs, but still 8,500 for a 98 inch TV, it's a lot of money, especially when you can get that 85 inch QN90A for 2,300 bucks, I mean, that's a big difference there. Big size difference, but 85 inch for most people is plenty large, and for $2,300, that Neo QLED right above here at the 85 inch is still one of the best deals. Sony has its own 100 inch TV, the X92J. That's $17,000. You can only check it out at the stores, so go and check it out if you have that kind of cash. And later on in the year, LG G2 is having a 97 inch, and I believe it's somewhere in the $30,000 range. So a lot of options at 100 inch, and of course you can go to an ultra short throw projector and get 120 inch and larger, so there's some options there. Then when we go to general TV deals, it's kind of hard for reviewers to give you guys the best deals on these because we don't get to review every single TV, and when you're in the middle to lower end range of TVs, it becomes very complicated. There's a lot of variables at play. If it's a 60 hertz, 120 hertz, if it's an IPS panel or a VA, if it has dimming zones or not. So you guys can look at some of these prices. And what I would recommend is go to a website, ratings.com, as you can see here. And you can actually go in uh, and click on TV reviews. And then even better, you can click on tools and compare TVs. And when you do that, you can put in any of the TVs that they have reviewed and compare them against other ones. So, you know, something like putting in the LG C1 versus the C2, which is what I did here, it defaults to that. You can then scroll down and see what the differences are. As, as you can see, you know, an 8.8 .8 out of 10 versus a 9 out of 10 are very similar, but it does show you that year over year, the LG C2 is a little better than the LG C1. And one of the differences you can see is that the SDR brightness watching cable and TV shows and sports is brighter. So that's an improvement. So year over year improvements are great, but you can put in any 
TVs in here and you can compare them and find out what is the best deal for the money. And they are very reputable. I like ratings.com. So check those reviews out on their website. And before I move into the TV mounts, I wanted to show you a couple of sound bars that I really like. First off, if you're getting a Sony TV, I would always recommend getting a Sony sound bar. They do have some connectivity with their OLED screens and their LED screens, but really it's the OLEDs that I think they work well with. And what happens when you plug them in together is that the OLED can actually be the center channel for the system, or it can elevate the center channel and give you a better sound stage. This HT A7000 is one of the best sound bars that I've ever used before. It's uh, on sale, it's only $100 off. Maybe it'll be on discount further as Amazon Prime Day in the summer goes on, but I like this. I also like the HT A5000. Both of them are really nice. And to be honest, for a $500 difference, I would probably just recommend getting the HD A5000 because it's solid. And if you add surround sounds and a sub, that's far more impactful than just going from a 5.1.2 soundbar up to a 7.1.2. So I think you could take that extra $500 you'd save by getting the A7000 and you could go ahead and add one of these SASW5 subwoofer, which is $699 and it adds a lot of impact to the system. Your house will be shaking and you'll notice a lot more impact with this sub. So I think that's a better deal than just buying the A7000 by itself. Now, of course, the A7000 is a little better, a little louder of a sound bar. So if you have the money to get the sound bar, the sub and some surround sounds and go with the A7000. And a lot of people have asked me if I would get the A7000 or if I just buy the HTA9 system, which is the four speaker system you can see here. I actually think that the A7000 is a little bit more my flavor because I prefer when the sound comes directly out at you from the TV, where the HTA9 has four speakers around you and it makes a phantom center channel. So it acts as if there's a center there, but it's kind of hard to exact that in certain rooms, especially in a room that we have that's larger. So I prefer having this dedicated center channel. Now I can use my OLED screen, as I said, as a center, but it just wasn't quite as good as having the A7000 connected in the same manner where both the TV and the soundbar brought center sound out at you. I like that better. So if I had to choose between the HTA9 and the HTA7000, I would choose the 7000 soundbar. And if I had to go to my general go-to soundbar, it would definitely be the Sonos Arc. It is $8.99 listed on Best Buy's website and Amazon, but it'll probably go down during Amazon Prime Day. If not, hopefully again toward the fall. The reason I like this soundbar is that it really works with pretty much every TV. I've had very little issues no matter which TV I connect to. It has whole home audio, so you can connect it to other Sonos speakers throughout your house. So Sonos, solid product. You can get a little wall mount to put it on the wall if needed but I highly recommend the Sonos Arc if you're looking for a quality soundbar. Also the Sonos Beam, fantastic as well and like half the price. So if you need something a little bit more budget friendly, the Sonos Beam is about $399. And besides the soundbars as accessories, I also wanted to look at TV mounts real quick. A lot of people ask for my opinion on TV mounts and I wanna let you know there are a ton of them on Amazon that are just fine for hanging even larger TVs. One of the companies that I've used a lot is the Mounting Dream Company. So this one right here that I've highlighted is actually only 29 bucks for a flat mount that tilts downward. There's also another flat one, this Pearl Smith one. It's only $19.99 and that only works for up to a 400 by 400 millimeter pattern. But if you know that you have that exactly, 20 bucks for a TV mount can hold up to 115 pound TV. It definitely can hold that. I've used it many times, very happy with that. I also like this Pearl Smith extension arm. For $29.99 to be able to attach it to one stud vertically and be able to hold a 65 inch TV for 30 bucks and swing it out. This is a great corner mount as well. I think this is a great deal. So check out these links in the description below. And then if you're looking for my bulletproof arm mount, I use the Mounting Dream 2380, the MD 2380. I've used this mount probably a hundred times or more. It's just a very solid, strong arm. It can go onto two studs or you can do one stud in the middle. So if you're looking for a mount for a 77, a 65, 55, this will totally work. Mountain Dream also makes a larger version of that mount. So if you're looking to get a 77 or an 83 inch, you can get this larger one right here, the MD2298XL. And if you're more comfortable going with a brand that you may recognize, Sanus makes a lot of good mounts. Now they are rather expensive. This one here, 419 for a large mount. I'm not sure that I would probably pay that, 
but there are more reasonably priced Santas mounts at Costco and at Best Buy. And lastly, I wanted to talk about one of the best accessories that I use, and that is the Sony XM4 headphones. And the reason I wanted to mention this is because a lot of you might be like myself, where you wanna watch TV at night, but you're concerned about waking up your spouse. So what better way to do that than buying a pair of noise-canceling headphones? And I've had a bunch of different kinds of noise-canceling headphones, and I've kind of settled in on these XM4s as being my favorite for the price. And yes, you can get the XM5s that are technically a little better with regards to having eight microphones, but honestly, the sound quality was the same, or maybe the XM5s might have been a little bit worse. I couldn't really tell they're very similar, and so if you can save 50 bucks or even more, both of the headphones are fantastic. And they both charge many hours in like five or 10 minutes. So if you put them on and they're dead one day, you can get three hours with 10 minutes charge. So very good headphones. The sound quality is quite good for the 350 bucks. And if you wanted to get a pair of noise canceling, truly wireless, the WF XM4s are my go-to for wearing to the gym. They don't make your ears sweaty. Uh, you can put one in at a time and put the other one back in the case. So I really like those as well. And they're at $279 and that's not even on sale. So I'm excited to see what these prices are going to be like on Amazon Prime Day. But these are all things that I would buy at the current prices. So getting them at better pricing is even better. So let me know what you guys think. I want to know what deals you find. Please make sure to comment below on what deals you're finding so other people can get those deals as well. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, set the notification bell to all, and just like that, I'll see you on the next one.